Open source technologies means that the code is available for everyone to, and the technology itself is available for everyone to use and modify, very importantly. And right now, we know that a very high quality open sourced model that's very cheap is DeepSeq R1, right? And V3 as well. But what happens if we fuse an, an other open source model with this model? Well, we get something that's called distilled models. Now, distilled models, you've probably heard that term before, but Let's discuss this right now specifically to DeepSeek because DeepSeek has a slight disadvantage. They have stated on their documentation, although I'm not sure maybe this is already a fixed issue, that their models, R1 and V3, do not support what's called tool calling, right? So their R1 and V3 models, this is the most famous one, of course, they don't support what's called tool calling that you probably already know about as well because it's a very common thing that you have this token that the model generates like that. It, it doesn't have to exactly follow this format, but that's very common, at least in like la the Llama models, for example. And I think actually in the in ChatGPT models as well. So anyway, so let's say it, it says tool and then name equals search and then query equals something, right? And then close it with another tool thing. And then maybe there's like number of results to retrieve or something like that, right? Maybe the domain of the website from which to re retrieve those results. And so that's tool calling where it just calls things like how an AI model can all of a sudden search, how it can save memories, how it can write in documents, all this stuff is through tools, right? So it calls this tool and then it's internal, like actual hard coded system, obviously then attends to it. Okay, it's, it sees, okay, there's a tool called, it means I have to search it. Let me get this query. Okay, they want, okay, the AI model wants to search this. I will actually send a request to the internet and search that query. But that's like a hard coded thing. And the model invokes these when it like deems it necessary to, right? So R1 and V3 does not have, does not have, tools, right? Or at least it's very unstable. That's what they've said on their documentation. Again, maybe it's fixed already, but I don't know. They don't have tools that uh, they can, like that you can invoke like this, right? So that's a disadvantage, right? But we know that Llama, another open source model, actually has this ability. So what do we do, right? Now you may or may not be familiar with what's a distilled model, right? But let's fuse a Llama model with tool calling with a R1 model that has reasoning, right? Very, like a very powerful combination that would be. And then what do we get? We get deep seek R1 distill, distilled into Llama 3.370 billion. Now, this is a very nice thing because this is also, this is by the way, also not the only model. You, uh, you can probably see like a lot of, you've already probably seen about, there's Quen, the model Quen, and Gamma, I think, or something like that. Other open source models that all have also been distilled into. And distilling, uh, if you are unaware, is just when you take the outputs of the model that you want to distill from, Right, you make it generate some kind of outputs, uh, responses to inputs, and then you take its outputs and then train the model that you want to distill into, which is this one. Uh, so, like those outputs are going in, those outputs are going as input into this model, right? And then when that is done, it actually gets trained to like generate outputs similar to this. So actually Llama 3.370 billion doesn't have the reasoning capability, but once you train it on the outputs of DeepSeek R1, which are also reasoning uh, outputs, it learns to actually reason on its own. It's obviously not going to be as good as DeepSeek R1 itself in terms of reasoning, but it's going to be pretty powerful and actually very good. And so how come can you actually train it again if it's like trained already? And let me just explain if you if you don't know. So you probably know the process of fine tuning uh, already. It's about like when you try to tune a model to a specific task, train it like it's already trained. 
but you train it on a smaller data set with a smaller learning rate in order to direct it to some other specific task. So I have like a coding data set of only coding problems. And then I set a, actually a way larger learning rate, right? Larger learning rate. And it learns way faster on this small coding data set. Uh, and then it uh, is specific is now a model specific to coding. That's why you may see like Claude code because it's been it's a model that's been fine tuned to be code specific, right? On a code task. But this is a little bit different. Uh, this is where you don't fine tune it to be more specific, but you just generally improve its performance by generating a da data set of of deep seek outputs and putting it into the Llama 3.3 70 billion uh, as input. That's pretty cool, right? So then what is the result, right? What happens as a result of this distillation? So in particular, I've seen a benchmark, although as you know, benchmarks are probably not a very good source of information anymore, as with the OpenAI thing scandal of like them using AGI benchmarks, right? That were sponsored by a, like a company that they're paying or something like that, right? So we know that this model, there's unfortunately no short name for it. You have to write this entire massive little thing out because if you just leave this, it's not going to make sense. If you leave this, it's not going to make sense, but regardless, the result is at least this model in particular has been shown to be on par with O1 mini. That's pretty cool, right? Especially considering that O1 mini was paid, right? Actually, I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe ChatGPT actually, prov maybe OpenAI provides it for free now. But uh, at least the OPI, OPI API is way cheaper, uh, and it's on par with them, right? So that's pretty cool. You can take the reasoning capabilities of DeepSeek R1 to be able to do math, coding, and logic, and all those things that it loves to do, and uh, you can take the tool calling abilities of Llama and you can do many things with it. Obviously, when we say on par, that has nothing to do with tool calling. That's about math and writing and so on, and like tests. But regardless, it makes for a very useful model uh, in all realms. So I don't actually remember what the one mini price is, but I believe it's like 1.1 or like per million tokens, right? Per million tokens for input, right? So the input's given. If you get one, if you get one million tokens as input into the system, you have to pay one point one million, and the outputs are four point four uh, million tokens. I I can't confirm. I think that was only for O three many, but I'm not sure. But regardless, and so that's pretty a pretty beautiful result, right? And so that's the advantage of open source models. But hey, look, if you're a solo software developer who happens to be self taught and happens to want to build some kind of software project on the side, you know, while you're going to school or while you're going to college or whatever, I suggest you try Stellar AI. Now, Stellar AI is an, uh, an AI tool that I built for software developers like me to be able to build projects from start to finish. Now, if you don't want to, you, you don't have to, but right now it's actually f uh, up for like a beta, like an early access signup. So you don't have to pay. You just get a, like a free two month period where you can try it, use it. If it's, if, if it's actually helpful, that's great. Right. You can let me know about uh, how you like it. And, and, and in the end, if you don't like it, you can just cut it off and stop using it. But it's only free for the first 10 users. But it's only free for the first 10 users for the next two months. Right. OK, so remember that. But it's only free for the next 10 users who sign up for beta. Uh, but it's only next. But it's only free for the next 10 users who sign up for this beta for this early access sign up. And six have already signed up and the free period, the early access period is two months, right? So I recommend you try it, link in the description.